Ladies and gentlemen, my name is ASC Praise, and you are watching Praise TV, the place where we discuss all things Protoss as it relates to my favorite game, StarCraft II. Boy, do we have a juicy gem to talk about today. I don't think there's a single video on YouTube truly breaking down these concepts that we're going to talk about today, which are the flawed nature of the StarCraft player. Let's go ahead and dive into our menu for the day to see what we'll be discussing. Are we really flawed as StarCraft gamers? I am going to attempt to make a case by walking through the following topics. The nature of the game, the StarCraft II gamer type, flaws of this gamer type, which will be the major portion of our time, we'll discuss real solutions for the everyday gamer, and then our theories will come to life as we look at a chart slash my game plan for your success. So without further ado, I introduce to you the flawed nature of the StarCraft player. Dun dun dun! <laughs> Are StarCraft players bound for failure? Let's take a look at the complexity of the game. StarCraft requires a high level of focus, knowledge, and isolation, particularly when laddering, and is extremely antisocial during the actual gaming experience. So. By default, such a complexity can only attract the obsessor, or a player with an addictive personality due to the game's difficulty. What do I mean by this, though? Well, to those attracted by its challenge, many players put on their lab coats, lock their doors, and fall into the endless abyss of StarCraft II theory and mechanical development. Well, wait a darn second. What kinds of habits will form from our practices? Is this a desire drenched in compulsion or self-control? Can we truly trust ourselves? Just admit it. We are addicts. Let's look at the flaws of the SC2 gamer. Now, we know that StarCraft is worth every penny and second of our time, and I don't dispute that. But let's look at how we use our time and some of the common pitfalls of the addict. Because the game is an RTS, a real-time strategy, the demanding and addictive trait oftentimes can stunt growth and lead to tunnel vision competitively. Let's take a look at the possible side effects of the addict. <laughs> Number one, non-goal-oriented ladder grinding. This is where you just hop on your computer as your normal daily routine when you get your time. It may be before work, before school, after school, after work, after you've fed your kids, after you've eaten your dinner or whatever. You find that sweet spot amount of time that you always sit in front of your computer and you just grind, 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 grind on the ladder with no real objectives or clear purpose for what you're doing. You don't even know that you're trying to improve. You just want to play the game because it's awesome. I also want to break down the fact that streams can also be the bane of our existence. Well, why? If you're a streamer of StarCraft, you get in the routine of jumping on and just clicking start streaming, and then off you go. You have your people in chat, you have your music going, you got your earbuds in, you got your soda, your coffee, and you're excited to give them another ex a repeat experience of your ladder grind. And oftentimes, it's so hard to be critical when you have the music pounding, you you know, the song's just bumping, you got your opponent kicking your butt or you're kicking your opponent's butt because you're psyched out in the zone and you got your players in chat. All of these things can just cause you to grind on the ladder purposeless. And that is terrible. Number two, mechanic redundancy. Staying in the rut of your own play style and mechanics because at this point, you've been playing the game for a while, and you, you're starting to build a natural bodily set of responses in your game mechanics. The idea of redirecting that doesn't quite sit well with you, nor does it feel natural. Well, let me ask you this. Have you put a lid on your mechanics and your critical thinking? Are you fatigued from the long journey thus far in StarCraft? Oh, I get it, says StarCraft. You've lowered your standards. How dare you treat the beautiful StarCraft like she's always going to be there. We see this at the pro level all the time. Players falling off, inconsistency, 
players coming in and out of retirement. And it is so sad to see and thousands of great players across the globe fall victim to being too comfortable with themselves. Or how about side effect number three, over-analysis. Yes, I said it, guys, over-analysis. This is actually a bad thing because one who overanalyzes simply lacks self-discipline to design practicality in his or her growth as a player. Sometimes we won't drill because we want to figure everything there is to know about the game before we try something. This is also the hindering work of the addict mindset in which the player is only concerned with talking to him or herself and never improving. I run into this all the time where players can name 50 things they did wrong in a game but they just ladder or play more custom games without clear, testable objectives, as if the errors naturally iron themselves out. Especially since StarCraft takes so much effort in three completely separate matches with hundreds of playstyles thrown in our faces, a good run on the ladder can have us drunk and in love with ourselves again, forgetting all the error that we just discovered in a previous set of games. Here's another example. I meet a lot of people who analyze chunks of long replays and pick out major decision errors that are extremely obvious, but all too often they miss a ton of subtle details about their replay that usually point to a much larger problem. The problem here is that we can be fooled by what we see. This is why, in my humble opinion, analyzing openers and mid-game for most amateurs is usually 9 out of 10 times better for the player because it emphasizes perfection in execution and critical strategy rather than big obvious blunders that you wouldn't normally do anyway in the right frame of mind. Side effect number four. You stopped asking questions like, can I execute this faster or more precise? How precise are my timings? Or you might find a pro player with a similar style and say, what is he incorporated into this build that I missed? Is my equipment as mechanically optimal as possible? This may include your posture when you sit down in front of the computer, your hotkey setup and how you go about your approach to hotkeys, mouse sensitivity, or even seeing what times of day you play or the state of mind you're in when playing. You might ask a question like, am I exhausted usually by the time I sit in front of the computer? You see, asking the right questions is what is critical here. Side effect number five. Are you trying to reinvent the wheel? Now, what I'm not saying is that inventing your own style in StarCraft is not important, but here's what it comes down to. Why do you fail to look at the greats before you? This is by far the biggest tragedy in StarCraft as we know it. There are people in Korea who get paid on a regular yearly salary to create, perfect, and showcase builds. Did you know that there's large global tournaments every year where the best players compete and their re replays are released to the public, even among the likes of professional casters who critique all of the gameplay? So many folks have access to watch the GSL and all major tournaments, which showcase all the latest in strategy and execution, and they don't even have their pens and paper out to soak up the free ladder wins. Listen. One mind is better than two in StarCraft, and there is absolutely no reason why you aren't utilizing every resource that you have. Think about it. There are tons of pros out there who have investigated and done most of the homework for you. The outline has been made, and it's your job to adopt it, apply it, and perfect it. <sighs> I need a sip of water. Okay, Praise. So enough with the endless downer commentary. I know I'm lazy, inconsistent, an overly comfortable blob of imperfection, and I'm sick of it. I want to change. So give me your answers. Calm down, my little charge lots. I won't let you go. Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce to you Breaking the Cycle. A journey to the motherland. In other words, here's the medicine for the StarCraft addict. Here are some of the resources you'll need to familiarize yourself with and fast. On the left hand side here we have 
Team Liquid forums. There's more out there, but Team Liquid is a great place to start. Search through these forums for all things related to StarCraft II. See what everybody's talking about and how that can make you a better gamer. Let's talk to people on these forums and build quality relationships that will translate into your gameplay and your interest in StarCraft II. Look through build order sites that say specifically in supply detail a build order, how to execute it, and what things to account for. There's plenty out there, so just pick one. The GSL and Pro League. These tournaments are constantly going on with the highest level of Protoss execution, or any race in general, and there's no reason why you guys shouldn't be watching these. Now, if you have an issue with the time zone and when they come on, then just simply get a pass. They're usually five or ten bucks, and you can watch all the StarCraft 2 you want at the most high level at any time of the day at your convenience. Another resource is tournaments and replay packs. There are many tournaments that happen every year where at the end of the tournament they release the entire replay pack. You can watch the opening uh, pool, you can watch the semi and finals play. I mean, there's hundreds of replays of every matchup. And these showcase, again, the highest gameplay during the time. Player streams. Go on Team Liquid or Twitch and look under StarCraft 2 and look for player streams. People could be of your same skill level, or there's various pros that stream all the time, and they have great music and high-quality produc production, so it's a very fun experience, and it's a great break away from your own gameplay to still watch the game and learn, but just through a different media. We also have YouTube channels. Many YouTube channels have dedicated StarCraft players that sit there and literally make videos, just as I am now, for your benefit. So take full advantage of tutorials, fun videos, anything related to StarCraft 2, and watch yourself improve overnight. And you might even refresh yourself with a new zeal for the game. Also, this is one of the biggest overlooked resources, yourself. Now, if you are being disciplined and exercising in the appropriate ways in this game, you can be your greatest resource because no one can think like you. So when it comes to being innovative and applying yourself, you're the one playing the games at the end of the day. So you are creating a mirror to your own gameplay that will identify a lot of the errors and solutions naturally while you play. Now let's take a look at the prescription on how to break many of the side effects of the addict. These are limited, but they cover pretty much everything we talked about. They combat all of the side effects. Start with number one. Create routines before your ladder. You know, make some clear objectives that you plan on seizing and completing during your ladder grind. And make sure that they're testable. You might be able to test them by looking at the replay or just seeing them in general. Set goals before laddering. That kind of summarizes what we discussed. After doing all of those things, go back through and watch your replays. It is so much more important that you watch your replays and you're being critical. A lot of people play thousands of games before they look at a replay, or they only watch replays when they're pissed off and thought that they should have won by a large amount. Guys, this doesn't build good habits in your gameplay. It's basically the opportunist saying, I'm only going to watch a replay as it relates to helping me win more games. And even then, it's out of anger, so I'm less likely to focus on what's really wrong with my gameplay. Examine your mechanics and your hotkeys regularly. Don't fall into being too comfortable and saying, well, I like how all of this feels, and so it must be optimal, because one day in my entire StarCraft career, I sat down and I made the most optimal hotkey setup, and nothing can beat it. Constantly be examining yourself and compare yourself to the greats. You may jump into a replay of a pro and notice that they execute things with a slightly different hotkey tweak that you might want to practice and adopt into your own play style. Also, don't overanalyze. Start small and then refine from there. You might want to liken your play style to certain pro players or players of equal skill to you and then continue to compare and improve your gameplay. 
Get tournament replay packs. As we said before, there's tons of tournaments going on, and most of them outside of the GSL and Pro League release replay packs. And notice a, watching a replay is slightly different than watching a cast because you have analyzers basically telling you what to think uh, on a cast, whereas the replay lets you intimately examine the players from their perspective in the game, so you get to notice a lot more details and different kinds of detail than if you were watching a cast. Lastly, don't try to learn something that's already figured out, okay? Don't try to reinvent the wheel. This is huge, guys. <clears throat> okay, we've covered a lot of information, and I don't want you to be overwhelmed. So take a second to soak everything in that I've covered. And don't hesitate to pause and write things down in this video, or even watch it in chunks so that you give a healthy portion of time to each segment that we talked about. I made this video to encourage every gamer to see the endless amount of potential that lies ahead. Don't be intimidated. Put on your lab coats, shut your bedroom doors, and dive into the endless abyss of StarCraft II. If you enjoyed our discussion today, please tell a friend and get people talking about StarCraft II again. Protoss players especially. Click up and make our race powerful, and let's soar through the sky of endless ladder wins and great fun. Again, guys, if you like my videos, please show support on Twitter, on Twitch, upvote it and Reddit, get people talking about it. I appreciate all of the support, and I'm humbled by the amount of viewership I've had thus far, and we're only on the second video. Again, guys, I am your host, Praise, and you are watching Praise TV, and this is The Flawed Nature of the StarCraft Player. Peace.